All right, folks, welcome and thanks for tuning in again. Today's video is all about the Puck Mouse. Now, I've done a video not too long ago about the Puck Mouse that was uh, not exactly thrilling. And I can't promise you that this one will be that either, but I have a little bit more to talk about now. Uh, so, I'm not going to be uh, going into too much detail, because again, I'm going to try to keep this video short-ish. And also, I'm getting over a cold, so I'm coughing and wheezing all over the place. Uh, so you might see a lot of weird cuts in this video. My voice might change from scene to scene. Who knows? We'll figure it out. So, get ready, grab a drink, sit back, let's do this. Now the first thing I want to do is show you that I'm not just crazy about this mouse because I have one. This is actually my daily puck mouse. I don't use this for general computing, but I use this to play on real tournament. I actually have quite a few of them. I keep them here in little baggies until I'm ready to display them properly. So let me take them out. And try to get it in frame best I can. It took me about, well actually it took me exactly a year to get this collection together. Looking for every different color I could find. And it wasn't easy because some are easier to find than others. The one, the two you're looking at now, the Bondi Blue, and yes, I say Bondi, not Bondi. Don't try to change my mind on that. The blue ones, Bondi and Blueberry, are very easy to find. They're super common. You can find those anywhere. The other colors, especially if you want them in decent shape, without discoloration and cracks and a whole bunch of other stuff, are a little harder to find. So it took me, I think, exactly to the day, one year, to get all these together. I don't even know if I can fit them all into frame, so I'll just do that. Especially the strawberry and the grape. Those were hard to find. Oops, angle that down. Another one that was very easy to find, but actually belongs last in the lineup is the graphite. This came with the G4, the iMac DV. So there you have it. All the colors, and I'll be making a very nice case for these to display them, because I just love looking at them. So as you can see, I love the puck. So why do a video about it? Well, I was thinking about talking about some accessories. So let me get those together and then we'll get to it. Being, according to the internet, the most hated mouse ever, there's not a lot of fans out there from, for the puck. Uh, a lot of people hated these things, but I'm not one of those people. I actually went online and started looking for some third party accessories. And here's one of them. It's called the eye catch. Let's see, focus. And what this does is pretty straightforward. You take your mouse, you clip this on, and now you have a mouse that's a little easier to handle. So I don't like the way it looks, but apparently for a lot of people, that made the, the puck mouse more bearable to handle. Another third party accessory was called the Uni Trap. Now, I've never seen one in person, but a buddy of mine, Nick Bustamante, he came across one. And he sent me a box. We traded, I got this puck 
Monk's accessory, traded him for an iBook. So let me get situated here, and then I'll open that up. All right, here we go. Give you a bit of a better angle. Easier for me to work with as well. Now, there might be a puck in here as well. Honestly, it's been a very busy few weeks. I don't exactly remember what he put in this box. So, let's find out. Never a lack of bubble wrap for Nixons or something. I appreciate it though. Look at that. We have a strawberry, which is actually in pretty damn good shape after a good cleaning. This will be good. And we have a blueberry with an eye catch on it. Ha, I actually didn't know. He was gonna send an eye catch as well, or I forgot at least. So that's everything in the box. And here we have. Well, we have my kid knocking on my door, so let me go see what he wants. All right. Here is the uh, the only other product that I know of that was made for the puck is the Contour Design Uni Trap. And this seems to be complete in the box. It's pretty cool. Let's put these aside. Angle this down a little and open it up. Now I've never thought in a million years that I would actually own this set. Oh, this already has a puck in it. Well, partial puck. These are all the buttons that came with it. And this looks to be... Um, a partial kit. Still has the original receipt in it. Let's see. $16. Purchased in 2002. At CompUSA. <laughs> That's cool. So, the original kit came with a blueberry button and these colors. The graphite button was an add-on. So this is actually missing the blueberry button, which is all right. I'll find that somewhere. Cool. Looks in good shape. These buttons were probably never used. All right, so let's fold this back together, put this in frame. Installing this is pretty straightforward. You take the covers off of your mouse and you clip it inside the Unitrap body. And then you clip, you pick the button that you want, the color, and you clip that on top. So this completely encases the puck, whereas the eye catch simply clips onto it. So let me see if I could take this apart. Oh, there's a little latch. Comes right off. Super simple. All right. How does this button come off? Easy peasy. All right, so let's take the, the strawberry, for example. Take the covers off. And I hope I'm doing all this in frame. Take the covers off, drop it inside the Unitrap body, and it's a snug fit. There's no real way to mess this up. So drop it in there, route the cable, pick the button that you want. In this case, you want to match the original. Comes pretty close. Let 
let's see. It has a cutout for it. There we go. And then this. Just clips up top there. And that's all there is to it. Let me see. It's actually smaller than I thought it would be, but these edges here where it becomes wider for me are just in the wrong position. Let's compare this to the uni or the eye catch. Maybe it's just because I'm used to the to the puck all by itself. Right now, I have to say that the eye catch is a little bit more comfortable because it's it has a lower profile. But here, if you have somewhat smaller hands than I do, you can actually rest your part of your hand on the mouse. So this might be a little bit more comfortable for some people. The only other thing I don't like about the uni trap is the mouse button. It, uh, and this is gonna sound stupid, but I love the click of the puck. This just sounds different and it feels different. Now you do have a lot bigger surface to click on, which might be good for some people, but right now I think I favor the eye catch. So, but it is really neat to have these accessories that, again, I only read about in magazines. They didn't sell this stuff in Europe where I was living at the time. So it's pretty cool to see and to finally have them. A um, little bit bummed that the, the blueberry button is missing, but you know what? I'll find that at some point. I'm not worried about it. It looks like this was actually used with the, the graphite button. There's some dirt under there, but there's no scratches, no damage. It's in really good shape. So let me clean this up and then I'll carry on the video. Hold up, hold up. I'm just positioning this on my desk so I can show you how the cars match up with the, with the mice. And look what comes popping out the top here. This is actually Bondi Blue, not Blueberry. Pretty cool. So let me finish cleaning this up and I'll be right. All right. I took you off the stand for a second to show you this. They got the colors really good. It's a very close match. So this is Bonnie Blue. There is no blueberry, but you can of course easily use this with the blueberry mouse. It's not gonna matter that much. Graphite, slightly darker, still a good match. They nailed the lime. Lime is perfect, tangerine, perfect match, strawberry, and grape. So Contour Design made a really nice kit, and uh, I can see why it was so popular. Very nice. Now the, the eye catch, from what I can tell, came in different colors as well, but I actually got the clear one. Well, thanks to Nick, now I have two clear ones. I think my kid is gonna appreciate having one of these. Um, but I like the clear one better because you're not required to take the side covers off the mouse so you keep the original color. If the eye catch itself was also a color, in my opinion, it would probably do not look as good. You end up with a little bit of a color overdose to have just the button transparent and the whole thing a color. Now, of course, if there are eye catches out there, I, I've seen them in blue. I haven't seen any other colors but I'm gonna to try to find them just to add to the collection, of course, but I like the, wood, the transparent one best. It's hard to say until I get my hands on the other colors, but I think I will like the transparent one best. So, all right, gonna clean this mess up. Thank you again, Nick. Really awesome to have this as a part of my collection, and I'll be right back.
Which one do you like better? This one is kind of easy. But I can play games and stuff. Yeah, and what about this one? Um, I can play videos. Yeah? You like that one? I can use this for games and this one for, for videos. Oh, how many computers do you have? Like, I could have... I can fit two computers oh, on my desk. Oh, okay. Your desk, you have a desk now. Okay, and what about... What about just the mouse with nothing on it? Try um, that. That's not easy. That's not easy? I need some, some things on here. Okay. So this is not easy. Do you like this one better? Yeah. Um, um, I like orange. Orange, okay. So you like this one better with different color. Okay. Can, can I see how, um, I can show you what I can do with the orange one. Okay, I'll show you. All right, so now that you know how a three-year-old feels about the puck, you get an idea of why these products were so popular. Not everybody liked the puck mouse. And I'll put it in frame just for, for this, there you go. It was quoted by a lot of, a lot of people and websites and magazines as Apple's worst mistake. And I never understood why. But you know, of course this, whole thing with my kid was a gag, but even he said that this was not as easy to use as this. He actually prefers one of these. So um, I think it was in March of 2018, I put a little poll on one of the Facebook groups, I think it was Low End Mac, and I asked, what, what did you think of the Apple Puck mouse? And I got, uh, I got quite a few quite a few responses and before I closed the poll or at the time I closed the poll 40 people hated it 24 people were indifferent about it and 13 people loved it and you know that kind of shows it, it, it's a small poll and I think I only ran for a day but you know it, it sums up how people feel about it in general and some of the comments um, they, they were all over the place as well. Uh, some of the positive comments was that uh, I used one for about five years, I don't hate it, and now I kind of want one again. Uh, someone else said, I never had a problem with it. I like being able to move it around with two fingers from the middle, which is exactly how I use it. I basically grab it with my ring finger and my thumb and, you know, kind of move it around like that. It's very easy to use. And some of the negative comments uh, said, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It's the worst Apple product ever designed. Um, someone else said, I have this mouse. It's the worst mouse ever. So, you know, it's not for everybody. Absolutely not for everybody. And there was one comment that stood out that I agree with 100% in part. Uh, someone said, I hate the puck and it's one button. But I will give it this, even today, I can't seem to get an optical mouse to point to the exact place I want it to go. No matter how I adjust the speed, it always seems to over travel. But the old puck goes right where I want it to every time. That's why I keep it around. And I agree with this 100%, but I'll, I'll touch on that later. So browsing the internet and asking different people uh, there were a few main objections about the puck mouse and I printed this out so I don't lose track The first of course and let me adjust the camera and see if I can get a better angle on this I cannot so never mind. It's too small You know, uh, I have big hands. I can't grip it. it it's, it's just too damn small But like the previous comment said it's super easy to, to move. I have fairly big hands and I have no problem with this mouse. No problem. So the size, I guess it's all about how you grab the mouse. Um, another thing, it's not ergonomic. 
Okay, I agree. It is absolutely not ergonomic. But guess what? Apple has never, from day one until today, which is November 2019, Apple has never designed a mouse that's ergonomically correct. Never. If you want an ergonomically correct mouse, you need a vertical mouse so that your hand is up like this, not down like that. So the whole ergonomic thing, just a buzzword that people throw around because they don't like the way it looks or feels, but it's not ergonomic. I agree, but like I said, no Apple mouse ever has been ergonomic. Uh, another issue for a lot of people was the fact that it's round. And I've read some really bizarre reasons as to why people hate the fact that it's round. Um, you could not clearly feel the button. I've never had that issue. You can feel the separation between the case. You can feel the indent, which granted the very first mice didn't have, they didn't have this indent, but Apple corrected that very quickly. So I, I, I don't understand the argument. Um, people said it would spin around and I've seen that happen. I've never had it happen to me personally, but I've seen it happen. And let me raise this up a little so I can demonstrate. The puck mouse cord is not very long. It was designed to connect to your keyboard. The keyboard at any given time would be no less than five inches or no more than five inches from your mouse. It will be plugged in right about there. So you have your keyboard here and your mouse would be like this, you know, you'd be mouse around. You could even plug this into the iMac directly and you'd be fine. You'd have plenty of cable to move around. The problem was when people started um, connecting this to the other side of the keyboard for some reason, suddenly you don't have enough cable. So you'd be mousing around, the cable would run tight. And as soon as you let go of the mouse, it rotates. So when you grab it back, you have to rotate it first, do your thing, and then it would slide again. Left-handed people that would leave it connected to the iMac and pull it all the way to the other side of the keyboard would have the same problem. They'd be using it, let go, and it would rotate because of the tension of the cable. But if you connect this to the keyboard, the way it was meant to be connected, you would never have an issue with this rotating, ever. It's simply impossible to mess up. Yet plenty of people messed it up. By far the most bizarre thing that I read about is people said it would end up upside down. I don't know how drunk or how stoned you have to be for this to end up upside down on your desk, but I just... I don't even know what to say to that. How, how do you mess this up? having it upside down I, I don't get it actually a couple of years ago my brother had a, a magic mouse and he used that upside down he calls me and he says every time I move my mouse down the cursor goes up if I go left the cursor goes right and all the other way around now you know uh, <laughs> I get it it's a wireless mouse it's the same design all over the Magic Mouse. I'll overlay a picture in case you've never seen it. I guess it's a lot easier to have that thing accidentally upside down than it is a wired puck mouse that looks different at the top than at the bottom. So I told him on the phone, dude, your mouse is upside down. He turned it around and he was good to go. But with a puck, no way you mess this up. You do not have this upside down by accident. And there's a few words I want to use, which I can't do because this is YouTube, but no way. So, the last complaint, it only has one button. Yes, as did every mouse before the puck. And several years, the mice after the puck only had one button. But before the puck, it was never a problem. After the puck, it was never a problem. Only on the puck, people were bitching and moaning about the fact that it only had one button. So the, the next mouse after this was uh, Apple Pro mouse. It did, no longer had a ball, it had the optical. 
the cool red light glowing and people were all wooed by it and suddenly they didn't care that the whole button was a mouse you didn't even have a mouse button the whole damn button was a or the whole damn mouse was a button suddenly no longer a problem so those were the complaints about the puck that I still hear daily when, when the topic of the puck comes up. Now, there's another side to the story. There's people such as myself that love the puck. Why do we love the puck? The first thing people like me love about the puck is its size. It is very easy to hold and to maneuver. You grab it with two or three fingers or however works for you and you know just move it around don't try to force it don't try to grab it with your whole hands or just loosely grab it however your hand falls on it that's how you use it it's a great design the next thing that we love about the puck and i touched on this before i think i'm actually losing my voice fantastic the puck is crazy accurate. Even today, if I need to get some very fine Photoshop work done, I will grab the puck. If I game, I will grab the puck. This thing is crazy accurate. And I've spent a lot of money on mice over the years. Very expensive optical mice with all kinds of adjustments. I have yet to find a mouse that is as accurate as the puck. It's crazy. Uh, the next reason, it looks great. Thing looks great, especially all the colors. I love it. It's a good looking mouse. And it matches your G3, G4, your iMac. It's a great looking mouse, you gotta admit. This is sexy, right here. Um, something that might be exclusive to me, because I'm weird, but I love the click. It has a solid click that doesn't wake up people sleeping on the other side of the house. It's a solid click, you know, sounds good. It's not shrill, it's not loud. It's a good click, just the way a click should be. I, have a, I currently have a mouse, it was a $90 mouse, and the click, you can hear it on the other side of the house. It's very high pitch, very cheap sounding, and the, the puck doesn't have that. And the last thing, it doesn't age. This was great in 1999, it's great in 2019. It's 20 years later and it still looks great. You can put this next to any computer and it'll look great. So, it wasn't for everybody and I guess that's why products like these came about to keep some people happy. But I can use it just fine without the the uni trap or without the eye catch if you are someone that doesn't like the puck because it's round it's small blah 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 you know what even today try to find one see if you can find an eye catch on uh, on ebay or something or if you're lucky find the uni trap slap it on there and it'll be the best mouse you've ever used because of its accuracy now Yes, it is hard to go without several mouse buttons this day and age. Everything has contextual menus. Every, every button or every feature in a game has several different things depending on which button you click. So it's not easy to use a single mouse button anymore. But if you stumble across one, clean it up. I got a very short video on how to clean the, the, the puck mouse. Clean it up. Try it out. You know, you might love it. So, now that we covered why these exist, we're moving on to the next section. Actually, before I do, I thought you might get a kick out of this. I printed out the original product page of the iCatch. So let me take this out. iCatch right here. And I got this through uh, the Wayback Machine. So, they, they didn't beat around the bush. They started off right away stop hand cramps and repetitive strain injury with the new Maxans iCatch mouse adapter. This unit transforms your iMac mouse into an ergonomically sound peripheral. Again, not ergonomically sound. 
Our team of engineers consulted with ergonomists to develop a product with the shape, style and feel of a standard mouse. I can promise you, this does not feel like any mouse at the time. It's a very awkward shape. Like I said, it's very low profile. Most mice back in, back in those days were much higher. So, yeah, I'm not buying that. Uh, the eye catch simply snaps onto your Mac mouse, providing you with a comfortable shape that molds to the natural contours of your hand. Again, maybe if you're three, not if you're an adult. So, some of the reviews. Macworld Magazine, November 19... Uh, Andrew Gore, I know that name. I know that name. Sounds familiar. Uh, 1998. Uh, the iMac's translucent keyboard offers good key response and a solid feel. Alas, the same can't be said of the iMac mouse where style has won out over substance. A small form factor makes it difficult to hold comfortably and because the mouse lacks the oblong shape of a standard mouse, it really gets turned around. <sighs> Again, this is YouTube, so I can't say the things I want to say, but Andrew, what the hell were you smoking, bro? <laughs> How do you turn a puck around? Anyway, we covered that. San Jose Mercury News, Amy Doan, same year, November. Because its size and shape makes it difficult to orient, there's a risk users will grip the IMAX mouse tightly, forcing their hands into a stiff claw. I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. I saw this all the time in school. People don't know how to deal with this mouse. They're used to a standard PC mouse that's much fatter and longer. So they try to force it. They try to put their hand on it like this, grip it like that. And I've seen some weird stuff. So it is true. People try to force it. They try to treat this like any PC mouse of the day or even an older Apple mouse and it just didn't work. Maybe, actually maybe that's why I love the puck. It was my first mouse I had at home. I mean, my dad had an Atari with a honking big mouse on it, but you know, this just came natural to me. Let's see, over time, that extra pressure could increase the risk of developing carpal tunnel syndrome, a disease marked by pain in the wrist and small muscles of the hand. I guess, I guess if you kept using this mouse the wrong way, kept forcing, forcing it, yeah, I could see that happening. But again, if you have the mouse, just let your hand fall on it, however it, however it does, and use it. That's it. I think it's a brilliant design, but I could not find any product pages of the the Unitrap. Wayback Machine didn't give me anything. Just a link to this is where you go to buy. But I'm sure they had a similar spiel on why this was amazing. And given Contour's uh, history. And actually, I have a contour design mouse on my desk right now. It's called the Uni Mouse. It's a vertical mouse. This is more, dare I say, ergonomic. You know, you can rest your hand on it, or at least most of your hand. It's higher, so your hand, instead of sitting flat, sits more at an angle, which is better for you. So, I would say they nailed it a lot better than I catch ever did but yeah there you have it that's why the products exist and they uh, they marketed the hell out of it because uh, Steve of Mac 84 said oh there were a bunch of these products so I said which ones I only know of two the iCatch and the Unitrap and he said well why don't you check the back pages of uh, Macworld and other magazines of that time because usually they were like 50 pages of ads in there. So I did, and indeed, I found the iCatch and the Unitrap in all of the ones I checked from uh, 1999. And I think, well, not all of the ones, I, I checked about five, and it was started taking up way too much of my time. So I saw these two heavily marketed. I did not see any other brands though. So as far as I know, these are the only ones out there. 
But if you know of another brand, please let me know in the comments. I would love to get my hands on it. So now I am actually going to clean up and take it from there. All right. For this part of the video, we move to my repair desk because we're going to do a modification on this uh, mouse right here. So what are we going to do? Well, the design is very straightforward with USB. USB operates on five volts. So what we're going to do, I'm going to grab one here. Well, first I'm going to clean this thing because it's sticky. Don't worry, I'm not going to do it on camera. What we're going to do is take a five volt LED and put it in the puck. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, we're going to find out together. So let me go clean this and I'll be right back. All right, so this is the mouse that uh, Nick sent me. And it's actually in good shape. I just had to clean that sticky residue off the side here. And uh, now, it's, now it's all right. And I just noticed that the bottom is on sideways or at an angle. That's unusual. supposed to sit like this but it actually locks in place like that never seen that before anyway we're going to be experimenting on this mouse so let's go take it apart and see what we can do okay there it is you don't have to take the whole thing apart i will eventually clean it but i'm not going to bore you with that all we need is this board right here and dude, i swear to god every every puck i open looks different i opened one last week that was made by logitech this board has been made by mitsumi has some kind of shield on this chip it's a completely different design so anyway this is all we're interested in right now and the pinout on every mouse I've opened, come on, get in there, it's the same. All these wires, they're always in the same place. So what we want to do, let me get some tweezers here, is attach an LED. Positive goes to this first lead, negative goes to lead number four, right here. So, that's all there is to it. Now, I can put the LED, and I have to, this is a pre-wired one, I have to take all this wire and heat shrink off. There's, I could put it right there, but it's not gonna look great. I wanna have it hover right over the ball, so that the light goes in all directions. So I don't know how I'm gonna keep it in place, but you know what? We'll figure it out. I have to go make a phone call first. I just forgot. Stand by. All right. Before I do that, I have to take this LED apart. Actually, let's see if we can do a quick test. Hold on. Hmm. That way... If it blows up, at least it won't take my computer with it. Connect this back. Let's see. Five volts, two amps. That should do it. I'm gonna plug this directly into a power. working I can't really hold it steady right now there it is I hope this is in frame because I can't look at my phone right now so it's working 
we're going to be getting rid of this resistor over here so it might be a little bit brighter by the time we're done but it works and i'll overlay a picture onto this so you can clearly see where things should be connected so let the, let's take this back apart I always clip my nails on the wrong day. There we go. Yeah, let's put you into not disturb mode for a minute. There we go. So I'm going to take this LED apart. And then we're going to see if we can put it in place there. There it is. Now this LED was pre-wired. Now let's say you have an LED um, with no color cables on it, so you don't know what is what. In this case, you want the positive lead to sit on the first pin, the negative on the fourth pin. So how do you know what is what? Well, let me rotate this. Okay, um, the positive lead, it's going to be hard to show you on camera, the positive lead will always be the longest of the two. If you get these out of the box new, you have a longer lead and a shorter lead. The longer one will always be positive. Uh, let's say someone, you have an LED that you cut, so you don't have a longer and shorter one, they're both the same length. One side of the LED, and I'll put a picture on overlay as well, you can see the bottom there is flat, and the top here sticks out a little. The flat part, the lead that sits by the flat part, is always the negative. So those are two ways you can figure out what's what. So you got the positive, which is typically the longer lead, that will be the positive anode and uh, negative. Typically the shorter lead will be the negative cathode pin. So I don't need this resistor on there. So let me go and take that off. Let's see. So in this case, the way this was cut, uh, focus, it's actually the other way around. For me, negative is longer and uh, positive is shorter. So that's why the trick to find the flat end of the LED always helps you figure out where negative is. So how are we gonna put this on here? I need some wire to extend it over the over the ball and again when you buy these new the leads are typically much longer so it shouldn't be an issue but I have to use a wire so there's no need to take it apart this far actually put this back together put that in there there I'm gonna use a little bit of tape to hold it in place So, let's see, I want it right above the ball, and I believe this is a, a three millimeter LED. You have them in five millimeters as well, but that might be a little too big. 
so I want it right there and there is some clearance why aren't you rolling there we go oh this thing is dirty there's some clearance between the LED and the ball so this should work now how am I gonna get it to stay in place I'm gonna try to bend these legs uh, it's gonna be interesting okay so I bent the legs so it sits right over the edge there and it should stay in place and I'm sorry to do this to you but it looks like I do have to clean it a little bit first on the inside so I can't even test Ooh, that is nasty so gonna clean this so I can actually test the rolling of it be right back And, uh, to get the testing done. So, let's take this again, hang it in there. Now it's gonna be resting on the ball, but when I push this down, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I have enough clearance and once I'm done I can bend the, the LED up again a little bit so I'd prefer to have it dead center but I don't think there's enough clearance between the ball and the LED so it's gonna have to be this way because I want this to sit right in the Apple logo but I first time doing this it's not gonna be perfect as long as we're having fun. So, I need to bridge that gap between these pins and the leads there. So I'm gonna use some of the wire I just took off. Strip it down. Let's see, is that enough? And I'm gonna want a little bit more. Better to have too much than not enough. Wind it up a little. Yeah, nice solid wire. And now I should have more than enough to make that work. Beautiful. All right, I'm trim some for the other side. All right, okay, I'm here. Yeah, that gives me plenty. Um, let me zoom in a little. As you can see, there are several contacts between the pins you want and the LED. You do not want to touch these because you don't know what they are or what they do. Uh, you can look at the, the circuitry on here and kind of figure it out, but don't risk it. Just route it how you need to, to avoid those contacts. Now, I'm using unshielded wire. I could use some, uh, some shielded wire, but where's the fun in that? We're going to use this, route it carefully, and uh, we should be all right. I hope. So... Um, actually, let me set something up so you can see better what I'm doing. All right, little experiment here. I'm going to use my microscope, and it's horribly off balance, so ex excuse the noise. Who is there? Let me see. All right, that's looking pretty good.
Okay, so I'm going to be recording this with my uh, microscope so you can get a closer look and see if I can pull this off. So, first things first, let's get these wires attached. Right there. I'm going to use a little bit of flux. Now, usually I use a fume extractor, but that's going to make for a very noisy video, so I'm just going to hold my breath. And do it this way. As you can see, I'm not a lefty. Let's give this a shot. Whew. Not easy. All right, that's one. And I should be using a little flux here as well, but I'm going to try it without. Oh dear. Eh, seem worse. Okay. With that attached, we can now route the wires to where they need to go. And let's see if I can zoom out a little. Nope, I cannot. Let's see, the LED is going to be right there. Let's see if I can get that into frame of the microscope camera. There. So we want it right in the middle. Well, it's going to be hard to keep this in focus because there's quite an elevation between the board and where the LED is. So if it looks like garbage, I apologize. Not much I can do about it. So we want to route this wire to make sure that it doesn't touch the contact up there. So a little bend, a little bend over there, and the LED is going to fly all over the place, but it doesn't matter right now. I could tape this down, but you're going to see that tape through the plastic of the mouse. So I want to try to do it without any kind of tape. Yes, watch. It is time to breathe. Not right now. Try to smoosh this cable a little. Still going to be bouncing all over the place. I might have to tape this down, but that's all right. All right, now we're going to take this, bend it a little bit that way, and then from here, bend it back.
All right. That's decent. That's decent. Let's put the LED back in place. So the angle is good on both. And again, let me move this over here. And there. The angle of the wire is decent on the left. I wish I could take this bend out on the right side. There we go. Okay. The less tension we got on the wire, the better. So, that's the idea. Now we gotta put it in place. And I wanna do that without melting any of the plastic. So, what's the best way to go about this? Actually, I would love to make a little cutout in the plastic there to keep this LED from shifting. Should I? Eh. I don't know if I want to do that. Nah. It's the first attempt anyway. We can always improve on this. So, LED is there. And take a little bit of tape to hold it in place. Right there. And yes, I'm aware that my fingers look like crap under a microscope. No argument there. That should not be going anywhere. And to tempt fate, I'm gonna try to massage these wires in a little bit of a better position. So grab it there, bend it that way, grab it here, and then bend it up. Oh. Oh, that is nice. Couldn't have done it better if I tried. Now it's your turn. You should be switching hands here. Bend it down. And up. Not bad. I'm actually going to take that wire down to take that tension off. And once I'm done, it should be perfect. Oh, yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Um now we gotta put it in place without melting the crap out of the plastic this should be fun i'm gonna put a little bit of flux on the wire see what happens if it fails i will I've butchered a puck mouse. Let's hope I'm not gonna do that on camera. Um, put a little bit of solder on the iron. Get my tweezers in case stuff shifts and all right. That 
is actually firmly attached. Okay, one down. Hey, wrong side. This soldering tip is in need of replacement. So I'm making it a little bit harder on myself, but that's all right. All right, let's push this down. Actually up here. Beautiful. I want to push this one down a little as well. All right, it's actually looking pretty good. Now we can get rid of the excess. Yeah, that should do it. Clean it up with a little bit of alcohol. You don't want to leave flux in there if you don't have to. Plus, it'll take some of the discoloration out too. up what's left and there we have it now will it all stay in place when I take the tape out let's find out yes it is Awesome. Okay, so a little overview on the microscope. There's the LED. We got two leads down. Avoiding all the other contacts on the board. Down right there, which we still have to clean up. So we don't want any flux on there. It was already pretty discolored when I started, but the more we can clean up, the better. Give that a second to dry. It's alcohol, so it will dry. And there it is. So. Let's see if QuickTime actually saved that. All right, it says it's saving. So we can get rid of the microscope. Excuse the shrieking. And there it is. Let's take the rest of the tape off. And let me take the phone off the stand here to give you a closer view. There it is. Not much to it. When I removed the tape, uh, the the wire on the right moved a little, so I have to get it away from that that contact over there. But it's looking pretty good. Let me put this back together, and then we'll give it a test. So let's move this wire a little bit. There. 
pull the LED a little bit more towards the center. Okay. Will it work? We don't know. Let's see if QuickTime saved this video. It would really suck if it didn't. Looks like it did. All right, cool. Let's put this back together. Give it a quick dusting. And you're not gonna find a mouse in much better shape than the one that Nick sent me. They're all gonna be sticky on the side. They're all gonna be dirty, unless they've never been used. There's not gonna be any dirt and dust on the inside, but you're always gonna have those sticky side panels. That's just the way it is. Okay. There it is. Next, will it work? So let me see if the camera will focus on this. You can see the LED behind the Apple logo right there. I would have liked it to be further up, but there might not be enough space between the ball. Let me turn this to dark over there. Between the ball and the LED. But next time I try this, I will be trying to push it further up. So, let's kill the lights. Or at least some of the lights. I have to pause the video to get the camera light off. Plug it into this little 5 volt adapter. this into frame and plug it in look at that uh, the adapter is a little loose but if I stop moving should be all right Camera's not picking up on it very well. So let me plug this into a computer, reposition the camera, turn all the lights off, and then we'll see how it looks. All right, so here it is connected to my Mac Pro, and it's not very happy. This is not a happy LED. Maybe I shouldn't have taken the resistor out. I don't know, but when I saw this, I thought, eh, maybe the LED is bad. Uh, something dropped um, so I grabbed another mouse and I have to go and create some light to find it I grabbed another puck this one came uh, from Michael Stanhope and then we connect that and I recreated the experiment so let me plug this one in and as you can see, that's a happy LED. It's not flickering all over the place. I tried to color the apple. It's a fail, doesn't look good. But this LED is not all over the place. Come on, you bastard. There it is right there. So it can be done. I'm gonna have to give it some more uh, attempts different ways probably find some different leds and i can show you this on camera actually yes i can the puck is working uh, where are we so it is fully functional it just takes a little bit more juice to power the led but there it is I'm not sure why the one we just did on video is freaking out. Let me try it one more time. The solder is solid. See, it starts off bright, then it dims to a bluish, and then it starts flickering. So maybe it's just a bad LED. Maybe I messed something else up that I don't know about. But it can be done. This is very trippy. Oh, there we go.
Yeah. Interesting. So I'll be taking this back out, trying a different LED. Uh, I can leave the wires in place, just solder a different LED on there and see what happens. But uh, that's how it's done. If you want to experiment with this, you can also take, wow, this is freaking me out. You can also take uh, two, uh, two volt or two, two and a half volt LEDs, put one on each side, you know, just wire them in series. You probably have to mess around with some resistors to, to make it work, but you can expand on this idea and do whatever. So if, you, uh, if you're gonna try this, if you have a creative solution, please let me know in the comments, put a link in, or if YouTube doesn't allow you to post the link, just drop it on the Mackiac Discord or leave it, uh, leave it on my website. You, you'll find a way to get it to me. So that's that. I have no idea how long I've been recording, but hopefully it wasn't too long or too boring. I'm gonna take some uh, cough drops, hopefully get my voice back and start editing this video. So, hope you like this, let me know. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I got a lot more boring videos coming. You do not wanna miss that. And uh, I will see you next time.